Hey, how you doing? Open Map Tiles is an amazing project. It lets you convert OpenStreetMap data to vector tiles and host it on your own server. Amazing. But what if it's building a layer that you don't ever want to use? And you don't want to ship that extra weight with your tiles. Or suppose it has a layer that you want to modify. Or suppose you want to make a whole new layer with your own data. Well, I wanted to do all three of those things. And it took quite a lot of handle jiggling. But I figured it out. And I wanted to share that with you. So let's go ahead and jump in. Open Map Tiles has great documentation. Uh, start out by saying there's there's really three ways you can use Open Map Tiles as, as far as I can tell. You can either download a MB Tiles vector tile database that they've pre-made. Those tend to be fairly elderly. Or you can use their their hosted service, which is a, a paid service, or you can uh, git clone the Open Map Tiles project to your own machine and build the tiles yourself whenever you want. And what I'm talking about is that very last option. If you're not doing that, this isn't going to help you at all. So their documentation, if you go down to uh, generate your own map tiles, it tells you a little bit to get started. You can find more documentation on their on their GitHub site. First, the very easiest thing, eliminating a layer it builds. If you go to their openmaptiles.org and their schema, these are the different layers they build. House number is like points with a house number in case you want to label that. I never, ever, ever want to do that. And they even note in the documentation it adds significant size to Zoom 14. So I'm going to throw that off right from the beginning. And that is the only really easy part of this process. You look in your Docker project, and uh, by the way, when you start editing the Docker project like this, do a create your own branch. That way you can still pull down updates to the master branch and see what changed and kind of merge those into, into your own working branch. Pro tip from someone who almost never remembers to do that. If you look in your OpenMapTiles folder, under openmaptiles.yaml, you'll see this YAML. If you haven't used that before, it's it's like a data format that uses significant white space. Things of it, like the Python version of JSON, sorta. But if you look at the layers, has had this layer layers house number house number YAML, and that's what I'm going to eliminate. A comment in YAML is just a pound sign, so you do that. House numbers are gone. That's the only easy thing we're going to do here. It gets much, much harder after this. But that's all you need to do to do that. Now, the data I want, the things I want to do with the other two things. How I had it before was I'd load open map tiles as a tile. Then I'd load an additional tile set that I made with Tippy Canoe that had our parcel lines and Mecklenburg's building footprints. And this is problematic for two reasons. One, you're doubling your number of HTTP fetches. Every 256, 256 tile has to get two tiles now. The second problem is that as duplicating some data, uh, Open Map Tiles has a bunch of buildings. Mecklenburg should have all the buildings. But Open Map Tiles buildings have heights. And Mechberg's doesn't because we suck. So what I want to do is keep the open map tiles buildings where they overlap, but where they don't, I'll insert in Mecklenburg's buildings. So that is that is the entire plan for the buildings. That's how I'm gonna get that together. And for the parcels, the tax parcels, I'm just going to add that as a whole new layer. Now to do either of those, I've got to get the data into the Postgres database that uh, Open Map Tiles uses. To do that, we are going to create a Docker image. And Docker is a whole nother, we're going to be doing SQL, Docker, YAML, Docker Compose. There's a lot of handle jiggling before I got this all to work. So th this, I might be prattling on for a while here. 
Docker image. I looked at the open map tiles project and they use some Docker images to import data from different things. Looked at import natural earth because that from an outside source seems like something I probably need to do. And I kind of looked at how that worked. Basically what it does is it, it creates, it, it, it downloads a zip file from a URL, unzips that and uses Ogre to toss it up into the post, toss it up into the Postgres database that uh, OpenMap Tiles is using. So pretty straightforward. So I went to build one of those. And if you've uh, never used Docker before, this will be alien, but I'll, I'll put all this code in the blog post. So if you're just watching this on YouTube, you can go to the description, jump to the blog post and, and see what all I did here. So I'm having to use an Ubuntu image and copy the script I wrote into it. And then I make sure wget, unzip, and goodle bin are installed on that Docker image. And the goodle bin here for Ubuntu 18.04, I think it's goodle 2.2, so it's not the latest, but I don't need to build goodle from source for this. I just need, need a little bit of goodle help, and it'll work fine. So you can see there's not very much of this Docker file at all. Now when this image opens, it runs this import Mecklenburg script. And what we're doing here is just a little bash script and make sure that if anything goes wrong, it just exits out. It doesn't keep trucking. That's what these options do. And this is our Postgres connection to get to the Docker Postgres image that OpenMapTiles uses. See, it's using these variables. These variables come from this little env file that's sitting in your OpenMapTiles folder. So if, if you ever wondered, how do I get into this Postgres database to see what's going on there? This is all of your connection information. So that's where that comes from. So it does a wget to get the parcels from our open data site and then it does a little OGR to slap that stuff into uh, Postgres. When you it gets there you want it to be in 3857 so give it a source SRS and a 2SRS so it gets there in the right way. I do that for my parcels and I essentially do the same thing for the building and those come out as the tables mech parcels and mech buildings. So that is our Docker image. To wire this up into Docker Compose, if you go into your OpenMap Tiles uh, root folder, you'll see Docker Compose YAML. And this sets up all of the Docker images and how they communicate. What I did is I added a new one called Import Mecklenburg. And to build something from a Docker file locally, what you'll do is instead of an image, which is telling it essentially pull it. You do a build and you give it the folder where your Docker stuff is and tell it the Docker file is Docker file and tell it to use that .env file. That's where it's picking up those variables. And the way this Docker Compose is set up, it creates an internal Docker network called PostgreSQL, and that's what all of these Docker images share and communicate with each other. Pro tip. You're going to want to fiddle around with this quite a bit. When Docker Compose first comes down to you, the ports for Postgres look like this. What that means is you can't get to that Postgres instance from outside of, uh, of, of Docker. So you can't see what's going on there. If you give it an external port like that, you'll be able to get to it. And to see it, you can just run uh, docker compose up Postgres. It'll fire that up. And you can go over to PG admin, which I actually run as another Docker image. 
let's see. Let's make it 80, 81. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Was it that? You can see our, our, I just call it OMT for open map tiles and your database. You see open map tiles and look in the public schema and you can see all the various tables and stuff it puts in there and how they're built. You can run SQL queries against it, all that kind of stuff. But to run that independently, you just do Docker Compose up Postgres and make sure in your Docker Compose, you give it an external port that it can listen to. So, pro tip, that helped a lot. So I'm stopping Postgres here, just control seeing out of it. Close that down. Uh, Docker Compose, no. where was I? Ah, so that's how I added this uh, import. Now, if you screw this up so it doesn't work right, to rebuild it, what you need to do is go docker compose build and import whatever you called it, and it will rebuild it from that file. Otherwise, it's going to keep running the same file. So once you have that the way you want, loading your data, you can go over to the quickstart.sh, or if you've made your own, whatever you call it. And after it does the Docker Compose up Postgres and force clean, then I go Docker Compose run RM import Mecklenburg. And that imports the Mecklenburg's data up into the Postgres instance. Yay, we got our data there. That's problem number one. Problem number two, let's modify the buildings layer. If you look under your layers folder and open map tiles, you'll see all your different stuff building mech I never actually used. Um, all we need to do to change that data is use this building.sql file. And it's starting. When you look at the SQL files in these folders, um, the operative thing, the thing that builds the tiles from, you usually find at the bottom, and it's this create or replace function layer underscore and then whatever it is. That's what makes the actual, returns the actual information to be built into vector tiles. And you essentially have something like this for whatever zoom levels you support. For buildings or zoom level 13, that gets this generalized one, which is generalized, but it's also only including the big buildings. And See down here for zoom level 14 and above, it's using this other query over here. And it's doing union all. So what happens it, when it sends it a request for give me some tiles? If it's not 13 or 14 or above, it just returns nothing. And that's how you control what layers are drawn at, at what zoom levels. So here's what all I did. I took the OSM all buildings, um, that's what's called by, so there's there's two layers, there's, there's a view OSM all buildings that does zoom level 14, and there's that OSM generalized thing that does zoom level 13. For zoom level 14, for this OSM all buildings, I added at the bottom union all and then I added my mech buildings. And I just set null for, for these height things that are, are in that view that's returned because we, we don't have any heights. And I return ODCF ID as OSM ID um, because OSM ID is what everything's using to union properly. So now I've added Mecklenburg's buildings to the, the whole building set that's going to be used for the tiles. But I still want to get rid of overlapping buildings. I want to throw out the Mecklenburg ones where they overlap. And I need to get the Mecklenburg buildings over a particular size into that generalized thing for zoom level 13. 
So I create this OSM clip buildings, which is all of the other buildings except for Mecklenburg. Just another view. And this is essentially a, what used to be the OSM all buildings. After I have that view, I can remove overlapping buildings by delete from Mecklenburg buildings using OSM clip buildings where the geometries are, are coincident. So that strips out about 120,000 buildings. Then I insert into this OSM building polygon Gen 1, which is what's used for Zoom Level 13, any building that's over 1460 area, which was around the lowest size of the building I found in this generalized, in this building generalized file. So now I've taken the building, first I eliminate the overlapping buildings, and then the big buildings I shoved into, into uh, the generalized one for Zoom Level 13, and the other buildings will already be a part of this OSM buildings all. So now my buildings, I've weeded out the buildings, I've thrown some into Zoom Level 13 that are big, and the rest will come out in OSM buildings all. So I mean, there's a lot of handle jiggling, but now it builds Mecklenburg's buildings into it, and that added uh, about, six megabytes it's uh like three hundred thousand polygons so we lost three for house number getting rid of we added six for this and now we've got buildings and because i only modified the sequel with what was running we didn't have to do any of the layer yaml stuff now we want to add a new layer for our parcels and to do that, I created a new folder called parcel in this layers folder. See, we've got our layer SQL, our mapping YAML, and our parcel YAML. Layer SQL is really straightforward because I only want the zoom level 14 and above. I just do that create or replace function layer parcel, which is the business end I didn't talk about before. And I am not including any features with that. And I'm just getting OGCFID as OSM ID, the geometry from parcels, and this controls where it, the zoom levels are. So it only reacts for zoom level 14 or above. And that's it. That's the entire bit of SQL. Much easier than the buildings because we're not really modifying anything. This just spits out our parcels for zoom level 14. Now our mapping YAML, I'm not exactly sure what this file does. It may just be used to make these kind of data diagrams. I don't know. But the mapping YAML, I just filled in this table polygon. I didn't even feel, fill in all the, the fields that are in it. So I'm, I'm not real sure what this does. I uh, don't, don't know if it's terribly necessary. But the parcel YAML file, uh, I'm giving it a layer ID and a buffer size of four, because that's what everything else had. I don't know, you know. And geometry is geometry. And my query is select geometry from layer parcel. And that's that function with these uh, kind of internal variables for the bounding box and the scale denominator. That's how we, we get that thing for that layer. The schema does this layer SQL and the data sources type it's not impossum three and mapping out you know I don't know what any of this does right here. It might not do anything particularly with the process. Maybe it's just for building documentation. But that's it. We've got a fairly simple SQL call or SQL function that returns this table. Got a mapping thing that no one knows what it does, at least I don't. And the parcel YAML, which is important. It kind of tells everything how to run. Now that you've got that, you need to go back to your open map tiles YAML and add a layer for that. Pro tip, add it to the very top. That way, when it starts processing the layers, if there's a problem, it'll fail right off the bat. Don't add it to the bottom because that's going to run through all this crap and then get to it and fail and, and you won't be happy. So pro tip, add it to the top. Now when it builds, it builds with 
parcels and buildings goes to 181 megabytes. So we've since removing the houses, house number removed three megabytes. We've added about 13 megabytes to our files. We're at 181 megabytes. This also added a little bit of time to the build time. Just raw native with open map tiles options, it's 22 minutes, 29 seconds for my area. With parcels and buildings, it's 24 minutes, 17 seconds, and that can vary a little bit. But we're, we're adding less than two minutes. And that creates this. This is the, the tiles that are coming out there. And I gave the parcel lines and buildings stupid colors so you'd see them. We're going to go in a little bit. And this is that zoom level 13 where it only adds the big buildings and it adds them. Uh, it, it's not shooting them up in the air. As we get in closer, the rest of the buildings will pop in and now they are shooting up into the air. And as we get down to zoom level 14, you'll see the parcel lines come in. So, and a lot of these buildings were not in OpenStreetMap. Now, a good person would try to get all those buildings to OpenStreetMap, and I've looked into doing that, and it's just a lot of work. And I'm kind of hoping to getting an intern one of these days that I can have do that, because that's what interns are for. But a lot of these are Mecklenburg buildings. Some of these over here are, uh, I can know these are native from OpenStreetMap because they have actual heights to them. Mecklenburg buildings will come out at the default height it's giving to all the buildings if it doesn't have a height or levels value. And it's got our parcel lines. So now I can load all my tiles for all my stuff from just one place. And that is how I built that. Uh, again, a lot of ha handle jiggling. There's Docker, Docker Compose, doing a little Ogre and Wget to get the data in. You're doing some SQL to monkey about with the data and create some views. You're editing some YAML. Handle jiggling. But that's how you can get rid of layers you don't need. It's how you can modify layers that uh, you, you want to change. And you can modify it in different ways. In this case, actually modify it by sucking a lot more data into it. And it's how you can make an additional layer and add it to your open map tiles. tiles. And open map, uh, map box vector tile format is so efficient that adding 320,000 parcels and about 300,000 buildings cost us 13 megabytes on this file that uh, Show you what kind of area I'm, I'm looking at. Yeah, this is about the, well, you're seeing this square, so it's like a several state area. <laughs> this is a, this is what I cover. <laughs> Actually, probably to like right. Yeah, that's a more accurate. I don't know how I got stuff over there. Oh, it's probably because I clipped it, but these polygons or whatever, just that waterway continued. So it just got that too. But where these roads end, this square, so maybe like a state size area, is what I'm getting at 181 megabytes with all these nice stuff. Anyway, that is how you do that. I hope you found that useful. Side note, uh, I had been using Simple Screen Recorder for these. I just ran into uh, OBS Studio, which is cross-platform. It's quite a bit more complicated, but it's pretty awesome. And that's why I used to record this. Anyway, good luck. I'll catch you later. Bye.